Welcome, Good Deal Travelers. You guys clicked on this video wondering, how do I travel with my dog? I had the same questions as you guys did a few weeks ago, and I found out there are five steps to take in order to successfully travel with your dog. This is my dog, Lincoln. He's a five-year-old Pomeranian. Uh, you don't see it now, but uh, this guy barks a lot, especially when there's people around. He gets very anxious, he whines, he barks, uh, but uh, there are ways to mitigate this. The step number one is to take your dog to the vet. Uh, you wanna make sure that they're up to date on their vaccines, on their shots, and the main reason is I wanted to get them some trazodone, which is a anxiety-reducing medicine. You don't need to give your dog medicine, uh, but I thought it would help him on his first time. I'm not sure how he react with all those people, uh, and I'm pretty glad that I, I did. Uh, if you do get the medicine, though make sure you give them a, a trial pill to see uh, how they react uh, i gave him a half a pill to see how he react and he was out uh, but uh, when i gave him half a pill at the airport he was still uh, quite excited he did not go to sleep like i did on the on the trial run step two is get your dog a travel crate uh, like this one i got this one from amazon for the pet carrier each airline has different dimensions. You can check on their, the airline's website of uh, how big the carrier can be. Uh, for him, uh, he is uh, five years old. He is about uh, 10 pounds. Yeah, and he could fit in his carrier. He was able to turn around, no problem. Teach your dog to get inside the crate and be comfortable while inside. Travel crate. Go, travel crate. Good boy. Okay. I definitely feed him or her treats when they're inside uh, so that uh, they associate good feelings with it. If you introduce your dog uh, on the day of to its new crate, uh, they will probably not like it to this new uh, confined place that they're in. Uh, but uh, for Lincoln, he actually liked his travel crate. I put it uh, underneath my computer desk and he would just crawl inside it every night and uh, he was really comfortable inside. When he first uh, went into the crate, uh, he wasn't sure how to turn around in it. Uh, he was definitely not comfortable uh, inside. But now, you know, like he gets inside, he gets to turn around, he can stand up very quickly. Uh, and he's associated all these good feelings of being fed while he's in his crate. Step three, book your flight and then call the airline to add your pet to the reservation. Uh, each airline is a little different, but uh, overall it's around $100 to each way for your pet to fly. Uh, for example, I'm seeing here Delta, Southwest Frontier, they charge $95. Uh, United, AA, JetBlue, it's all the way up to $125. Uh, you do not pay this fee over the phone though, you will pay the fee when you get to the airport. The airline fee is a set cost. It does not change depending on how long the flight is. Uh, and so therefore it wasn't a very good deal. Uh, I mean, I flew an hour to Baltimore from Pittsburgh uh, and uh, I think his ticket fee, $100, was more expensive than my ticket. Imagine that, my dog's airplane ticket was costed more than my airplane ticket. This airline fee can be offset if you have a credit card that gives you airline incidentals. Uh, normally these airline incidentals are kind of a hassle to spend through, uh, but it also works for uh, your pet incidental fees. It's important to call early and to add your pet to the reservation uh, because each flight only allows a certain number of pets on their planes. When you book your hotel, uh, make sure that your hotel is also pet friendly. I've seen pet fees for as low as $25 and as high as $150. Uh, in general, the closer you are to the city, within the city, it's gonna be a higher pet fee. Uh, and if you're uh, booking outside the city, then it's certainly, gonna, the cost is gonna be lower. You can also check Airbnbs. Uh, some of them don't uh, charge anything extra for pets and some of them do have a pet fee. A website I use is called bringfido.com. It has an easy search function to find a list of pet-friendly uh, hotels, restaurants, uh, vacation rentals, and destinations. Step four is the pre-flight care. It's the day of the flight. I would uh, take your dog out for a long walk beforehand, tire them out, try to get them uh, as tired as you can, uh, but to also don't feed it uh, too much food or water. I would also get to the airport a little bit early since you will need to go to the counter to check your pet in and to pay the pet fee. Uh, sometimes, uh, depending on the time of the day, time of the year, these lines can be quite long. Uh, and so I would certainly get there an uh, extra half hour early than what you're used to uh, to get prepared for that line. After you pay at the counter, the attendant will put a tag on your 
dog's crate, a uh, travel crate. And then at the gate, they will check that tag to make sure that you have uh, already paid for your dog and they're fit to travel. When you go through security, uh, for the love of God, please don't put your dog through the x-ray machine. They will hate it. Uh, instead, either carry your dog or walk your dog through uh, the security checkpoint. Now, here's actually the best part. I had no idea that you could actually walk your dog in the airport. I thought only like service animals or emotional support animals were allowed to, but apparently you can just walk your dog uh, all around the airport and I recommend that you do so, uh, so the dog gets to sniff everything and uh, get used to its new environment. There's also pet relief areas in uh, each terminal uh, and recommend you go into them, let your dog relieve themselves, but also there's nobody in there usually, uh, so it's kind of like a little private lounge. Oh, speaking of airport lounges, you're allowed to take your dog inside these uh, lounges as well. Uh, I did not let Lincoln out of his travel crate while we were in the lounge, but uh, the best part was these lounges had cheese and that's his favorite. You will get a fair amount of attention when you're walking your dog through the airport. Uh, a lot of, oh, your dog is so cute and uh, can I pet your dog? I don't really like it when people touch my dog. I don't know where their hands have been. Uh, it's kind of like, ugh. And then the worst is when someone's like petting them and then kissing them too. And I'm like, ugh, double ugh. There was this one kid, I remember he had like uh, chocolate stains and some snot on his shirt. And he was like, can I pet your dog? Uh, and I was like, nah, this guy, he's, uh, he's kind of vicious. He might bite you, right Lincoln? Step five, you made it to the airplane. Uh, most websites, airline websites, will say that your dog will count as your carry-on item uh, or your personal item, uh, so you can't take both and your dog. However, when I went on Southwest both ways, it did not matter. Uh, I was able to uh, take my backpack and my uh, suitcase uh, and, uh, and Lincoln as well, and they had no problems with it. Your mileage may vary with, uh, with this, uh, but at least on Southwest, nobody said anything to me. Your pet carrier, it must stay under your seat the entire time. Uh, I was worried that uh, I'd have to like shove the, the crate underneath the seat or something, like it was too, too short. Uh, but uh, on, at least on Southwest planes, it fit very comfortably. There was a, a couple of inches uh, above the top of the crate, and so it was very comfortable. Uh, Lincoln whined a bit when uh, he was under the seat, so I had to constantly feed him treats. Uh, so that's definitely a tip is that uh, yeah, constantly give your dog something to do, uh, maybe something to nibble on uh, and they will be less anxious. However, when the plane was in the air, uh, Lincoln can feel the energy shift in the cabin. He knew that uh, nobody was going anywhere. So then he stopped whining. Uh, but then when the plane landed, he could feel like a, a well, you know, it's an urgency and some anxiousness in the air as everybody wants to get off uh, the plane. So he would bark a little bit more. Uh, and that's when I had to keep feeding him cheese. And there you have it. Those are my five steps to taking your dog on a plane. It was so worth it. After we got off the plane, I took him to the forest. We were able to go hiking. I also took him to the ocean uh, and he learned how to swim in the ocean. He had a great time playing with other dogs as well. Please let me know if you guys have any comments, questions. Uh, I will be happy to respond to you all. Please like and subscribe to me. It really helps out the channel. I'll see you guys next time on Good Deal Traveler.